Hello guys, Pokemon Chaser here, and welcome to the fourth episode of my gaming podcast. And today we will be discussing some new topics, and um, I I guess that's what we're doing. Because yesterday I, had a, I was really busy and I had a hard time with, with making videos. My Wi-Fi wasn't working properly and my 5G was wonky, so I guess we'll do this today. Um... So the first topic today, I, 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 I'm, I think I'm, I'm a little bit on a time crunch. I'll be busy later today, so I might as well get these videos done as quickly as possible, but with higher quality. So, the, so quickly, Nintendo's calculator, well, they, it was released, uh, I think about a few days ago by the time of this recording. But, but seriously, Nintendo, it costs $10. Are you kidding me? Ten bucks for a calculator? It costs five bucks at Walmart just to get a calculator. And even then, seven dollars for a calculator that's scientifically proven to do scientific math. Now, I don't know why Nintendo wouldn't release this for free, maybe for profit. Oh yeah, I did discuss that in my last week's podcast, if you haven't seen that yet. But... If you haven't seen that yet, let me explain. So, calculators... So, uh... Calculators... On consoles would probably bring up productivity. And that's what Nintendo's trying to do here, is increase productivity with their consoles. So they can get more money out of it, like profit. So... I guess what Nintendo did was price it at like 10 bucks or something... So all the kids can ask their moms to their parents or dads to buy the calculator for them, and then Nintendo gains a lot of profit, and it's made by Nintendo themselves, so it's not going to a third party company. If I, I think I explained it in more detail in last week's video, but but be honest, I know you're trying to increase your profits because. You know, everyone's first quarter in the, uh, what's it called? Uh, first quarter in the economy session was really bad. A lot of the video game companies were really doing good, except for a few. I think Nintendo was one of them. Because every everyone's starting to think like, oh, they can't make enough consoles. Uh, we can't support them anymore because we have these old consoles. Like the 3DS, Game Boy, uh, why did I say Game Boy? Wii U, Wii, all those other ones. We can't even buy the Switch because everyone's buying them for their kiddos during the stress, stress for, uh, stressful pandemic. I think that's why, I think that's why they're trying to do this, but increase productivity. But holy crap. I mean, you can't make enough Switches already. And everyone's going to be asking their moms to buy them a $300 Switch that has a calculator. And say, oh, I'm going to cheat in school recess. Yippee! And then show the calculators off to their kids. And word of mouth is going to spread. <coughs> Abibo. <coughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. So, on the second topic of today, uh, I believe it is, uh, so Roblox announced a few days ago that it was going to be releasing a new code update. Well, there's some bad news to this. Every single developer has been using some sort of code since 2019. I'm not a game developer by chance, but I will be, but I don't know how this will, so will affect Roblox games, but I certainly know this code update will break some things, like, remember them old games back in 2014 you can't even play anymore because Roblox, uh, decided to break the code and update it, and I, I know it's for, like, what is it called, like, glitch fixes and whatever, but they updated the code, they update the code so dramatically that it, the ga their, their developers' games break. It's not even funny, like, the games break. Like, tw games from 20, 2000, 
7 through 2015 are already broken unless the developer has already updated them to the new code, which over like 30% of the developers do that. The other 70% just just say, oh, well, I can't, I don't know how to update this. I'm just going to leave this as is. Hopefully people can still play it. I know there's this one game from 2009 called uh, Zombie Outbreak. It's been broken for like 11 years at this point. Like, it legit been broke for 11 years. Actually, 12. Now that I think about it. Yes, 12 years. Um, and the developers, I, I, the developers were like on their forum, we can't update this. Roblox has, you know, updated all of its code so much back in 20, uh, 2009, 2010 now. The game was released in 2008, but that was before 2000, 2009's code change. So it's a, like... What are we going to do? We can't learn this new code. It's too complicated for our developers. We're just going to leave the game as is. And I think the game... I don't know what the game is. It's, it probably got remastered a few times. Uh, I just don't know, considering I don't follow those games pretty much. I only follow the games that are trending, as any other YouTuber shall. I do feel bad for the developers of Zombie Outbreak and others who couldn't really specify the code too much so i guess there's that uh next topic uh it was about twitch and the hot tub beach streamers uh it gave a questionable response to some of those streamers i mean some streamers got demonetized entirely they can't receive donations some of them are demonetized half and half they can still get donations some streamers, however, are flipping out of control. They're not even demonetized because Twitch says no nudity. Well, uh, well, here's Twitch's response to that. At a beach category. What the freak? Twitch is for gamers, not for freaking people in tubs and beaches. Like, what? That's for Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. It's not for Twitch. Like, I'm, t uh, I will be making a Twitch soon, so I guess that's plausible. The only thing non-gaming about it right now is just chatting in the beach, uh, the hot tub beach category. <gasps> uh, it's kind of, kind of stupid in my book. Because, like, you have a guideline on these things, right? And why? Like, you have a guideline on these things. Why would you make a beach category? People are going to be wearing inappropriate out attire. Like, I, I, I don't know. Let me get on in the next category before I go on the rampage. So, uh, have you have you heard of Among Us? Uh, I'm pretty sure everyone has. Everyone thinks it's done. Well, it's actually not. Uh, so, the developers at Inner Sloth released new color, uh, actually teased new colors for the Among Us characters, thank God, finally got, uh, so, a couple days ago, I think a week ago now, they, uh, they teased a color by the name Rose, uh, it doesn't even look like a rose, it might be looking like a pink one in that, um, so they plan to add, there's already what? Red, yellow, blue, green, cyan, lime, brown, black, white, and what's that other one? Cyan, uh, there's no pink yet. Yes, there is pink. So they're going to be adding like what? Five more colors? Uh, there's going to be 15 colors. Which means the lobbies could be brought up. But the thing with that is, why didn't you add more colors in the first place? Like, why can't you have, like, a color hex hex code where you can type out the color you want? Oh, yeah, that might be bringing up some glitches there and there. But 
instead of releasing standalone colors, why not just make a hex code where you can input the code in? So, like, if you want lilac purple or crimson red or SpongeBob yellow or Patrick pink, you can do that. Or maybe Squidward blue or maybe a Jenny white or something like tan black. Like, you can do all those things. Like, you can include a hex code and still have, like, ten players. It's not that difficult. I mean, I, I'm not a game developer myself, but I bet that would probably be not difficult. That would probably not be difficult for them to just... I mean, all you do is just add a hex mod or in there or something... And then people would type out the color name, like, like, hashtag FT8909, and then a random color would come up, right? I mean, there's, like, what, 10 million colors that you can use? That is, that's a huge pot, pro, blah, blah, blah. that's such, that's a huge opportunity, and Intersoft decides to waste it on... 15 colors? You kidding me? Like, 15 colors is what? Uh, let me calculate this here. 15, wait, uh, divided by 10 million. That's point zero 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 zero. and that, excuse me, let me say this again. Point zero 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 one five percent of those ten million colors. So that's a pretty low majority of the colors that Minersloth is using. What? I mean, you could just use all those ten million colors and even more growing to this day. Um, I mean, all you do is add shades of gray, add white, add black, you know. And add white, add yellow, add red, what, what, like, add what you can do. But, uh, I guess Inner Sloth wants to keep it simple. I can understand that, but why not add a hex code? I mean, adding a hex code is even easier than, like, looking up colors and saying, Oh, this is rose pink or flamingo pink. Or indigo. I don't think indigo is an actual color. Because it's a mixture of purple and blue. Like, what the heck? And I'm not going to go on a rampage, but if they, did, but if they do include in, indigo, I'm not even using it. So, yeah. I don't think indigo is like... Uh, indigo is just a mix of purple and blue. So if you like this podcast, please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and hit that like button. Oh, and also, before you leave this video, I want to say some things real quick. Sorry for the lack of videos. I know Chapter 8 of Piggy came out yesterday. It's just too difficult for me to do right now. Um, Chapter 8 is too hard to do. The bot, the bot of Chapter 8 is... Likes to grab you from a mile away. I spent 30 minutes. I spent like two hours trying to complete it yesterday. So difficult. I like a lot of people are complaining about chapter eight and how hard it is. Cause you know, the bot Archie always likes to, uh, uh, the bot Archie always likes to hang out glitched in some spots. Most urgent. If there's like one stairwell you need to go to and there's only no other stairwells. Well, say goodbye to your luck, because he's going to grab you. And, uh, and the, uh, the mini bots are straight up annoying. Because every time you jump on them, if even if they're dead, they can still grab you. So, and also, Archie's really fast. Like, he's all God Almighty fast. He's the fastest player, and if you make one screw up, you're dead. You're dead. Because he can catch up to you so quickly. Unlike Ellie or Alphys. Alphys isn't even quick as Archie. And and he has unlimited vision. Like he can like he can see where everyone is. Like everyone. Even the spawn point. If he's like on a lower levels. 
he can straight up go up to a lower level. I think his AI is glitched. Because many tuning needs to fix that. Even on normal mode, it's that difficult. Even with the abilities, it's so difficult. <sighs> and also, one thing, I'm making an update to their full Trex content cop. Because I, I did see some new evidence that full Trex is really scummy for. So, yeah, if you like this video, please hit that subscribe button. See you later. Peace.